both start recording. So we're recording now, according to OBS. And if I make you full screen, uh, let me just check on OBS to see that it's getting it. Uh, I think it is. So uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, first uh, PyScript fun meeting of 2024. What a lot of fun we had last year. Um, and welcome to the new venue. I hope this recording is working and you can actually see a bunch of nine talking heads, as it were. Um, and these meetings are very simple. Uh, as I always say, it's like you're by the water cooler or you're at work or you're having lunch with someone and they say, hey, do you want to see something cool that I've hacked together? Um, and then you go over to their desktop or their laptop or whatever and uh, they show you something cool and you go, wow, that's incredible. And you learn something and you share something and it's all really good fun. Uh, so the emphasis is on fun here. Um, so uh, without further ado, uh, do we have people who have fun things to show? I was going to say, raise your hand, but we're not in Zoom anymore. <laughs> so we've got one. Uh, Andre. Uh, anyone else? No? Um, okay. Uh, Andre, it looks like uh, the first meeting of January is, is, is all yours, matey. Thanks. I just made up something quickly because I felt like, oh, I should really show something. <laughs> and um, it's rather I'm pleased you did, otherwise this would have been the world's shortest meeting. <laughs> uh, it's, wait, can I, can I actually share my whole screen here? Yes, you can. Okay. There's a share screen button for me. Okay, and now I can watch the stream, so let's do that. Okay, so this is um, an old demo, but it just got improved, or maybe not, <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, there are a few things that we would like to improve in uh, in the IDOM uh, API, but because we now have also uh, JavaScript modules in, um, I would like to show a way to actually use some of these modules in here. And, uh, and for instance, this is UHTML, but it's actually, it, the, the concept works with the lit HTML, lit elements, and all the kind of uh, UI libraries based on templates. And uh, the last time I showed this, it, it was using, it was passing here a lot of uh, extra uh, named things, uh, duplication and all boring stuff that I don't really like. So this time I thought, how about I manage to create an almost one-to-one -one representation of what can you UHTML or lit uh, do on the web. And so here we have a template string and uh, the template string just has um, interpolations. That's how these are called. In Python though, these are just identifiers. So for uh, H3 click value, button click count, and where are these identifier defined? Well, in the module. So we have a handler, which H3 click, button click, which updates the, the count to one, and then call invoke the update function again. And we have a value, which can be anything. In this case, it's just hello world. The count starts from zero, and to bootstrap this, I just update the thing. So I didn't manage to do this in MicroPython, even though we have a template now, uh, a proof of concept that works. We have uh, MIP, so the ability to import modules as well. Um, so this is still pyodide, but the final result is just, I define my little logic in this module for this element. In this case, I'm just updating the, the body. Uh, I define a template literal um, with a template string uh, with those identifiers and those identifiers are somehow magically resolved um, when we invoke in this module the, the, the local uh, ex export from UHTML and this is just a tuple it, it, it brings back the render HTML and SVG which are the only thing that matters more uh, right let's say they, they matter all of them but these are the most uh, useful primitives and so, yeah, the result is just this one, which is not, yeah, this one. So I, I, I just refresh <coughs> and we can see the, on the page we have our body with our H3, hello world. 
patterns, click zero, and I can just click. And when I click, it just it just keeps going. And if I click the header, it just prints the event name, which is in this case the event type, sorry, which is click. So that's it. It was pretty quick, but the fact that I managed somehow to hack around the uh, the need to pass uh, keywords or key value pairs as a as a complementary detail for the template literal uh, made me feel like this might be interesting for someone or maybe worth um, thinking more about this kind of approach because I think it's pretty clean. So we don't need to deal with the DOM. We don't. Need, we just reach the, the where we want to render the content, and we just show the content. And the the library is super smart, so it does all the DOM diffing, all the fast things it can do. The handlers are there, and they just pass your code back, and you're done. Values are updated automatically without changing the DOM, so you can see in the elements uh, if I have the the whole three expanded, and if I click, it just updates this little piece of chunk and nothing else and um, that's it any question yeah okay so your ta oh okay so the code's just disappeared but uh your template code looks like you're using javascript style interpolation um i'm using actually python template and uh, the way to find identifiers in the python template looks really like a javascript kind of interpolation. right okay so, um, because the, uh, in Python, if you put the F up front, you don't want dollar brackets. Yeah. You want the, the format function to actually work. But I, I don't know if exists a way to trap or intercept that F, the format, automatically uh, out of the box. Um, because of that, I thought, okay, um, maybe maybe I just I just go with the, with the template module and the template reaches or find uh, identifiers through these dollar brackets and so that's that's the main difference but it could be like you pass the the the, the string and you and you then add dot format and and you pass some magic there there are two ways to do that yeah but this one look the 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 easier way to to do something similar that is possible on on the dom um, so I'm, I don't have any strong opinion. It's just that I managed to do to replicate something in Python that theoretically is not possible. So that's for me already cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. Any more questions or comments? Martin, go for it, and then Jeff, and then Lukash. Happy New Year, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're muted, matey. You're still muted. Yes. Yep. Jeff isn't you, muted because I can hear him typing. <laughs> here, here you go. Here, here we go. Oh, it. he's found it. He's found the button. Okay. Here we go. Here's my, my previous grumpy old programmer, Whinge. Click on the mute icon on your own video image, on your image in the in the in the tiles. What would you expect that to do? That little icon that says you're muted. I'd expect it to full screen my face, of course. Of course you would. I rest. Uh, no more questions, Your Honor. <laughs> expect the Zoom meeting to appear suddenly. <laughs> anyway, moving on. I can't remember what I was going to say now. Oh yeah, Andrea. So, <laughs> so obviously one of the first things as you, you know when we started, what, as soon as we had PyScript, we we're like, okay, hmm. Now we need um, like a reactive f framework, such as you know, like a, a some kind of component framework like Vue.js, like React, but in Python maybe. We'd... So is this is this the idea of starting to down that road towards that kind of idea where we? Well, the idea is that we can bring in not React because React requires transformation of around JSX, which is a syntax that is not supported in neither JavaScript or Python. So you need bundlers, transformers, compilers, or stuff that somehow make that JSX understandable for the for the rest of the environment. So I wouldn't go down that road, but Vue could be a great example because Vue doesn't use JSX, or probably there is some 
version of your module or extension that uses understands JSX. Um, and we could have something like view in PyScript. And we, I think at this point with relatively ease because if my, if UHTML or template literals and anything else works, I don't see any blocker anymore to not have this, this libraries framework somehow ported. In my case, the, 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 U, the UHTML.py is a very tiny file that just imports and does a little bit of magic to tra transform the template in the way it's needed. But that's that's all. So it's actually 20 lines of code and nothing else. And the rest is just um, native DOM library working yeah. in the DOM. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't mean like allow us to use Vue or, you, or interface with Vue or React. I'm just thinking, is this basically, if, you know, because as soon as you start writing web applications <clears throat> in JavaScript, you suddenly knew, oh, actually, wouldn't it be nice if I could have a template and have it reactive so I can just reference my variables and I can templatize it? And it's like, it, it always seems to me, it's like, it's a natural natural thing for us to go next, right? Is, okay, what's our what's our Python framework in that, in that, what's, you know, the, a complete Python story to that? It's like... So yeah, I can create. Yeah. <laughs> if, if anyone has hints, suggestions, or any famous cool framework for doing UI, I don't know because all I, all the Python I've done was by Django, or it was to create SS server side rendered pages, so no listeners, no stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And this is actually right now Python handling with the DOM directly, so dealing with the DOM directly and handling listeners and. Uh, values and nodes and stuff like that. And so if there's anything already out there, that would be cool <laughs> to explore and, and find out. Otherwise we could make our own thing if you want to. Yeah. Um, just, just before, yeah, exactly, Alex. Uh, before I hand over to Jeff for his question, uh, Alex, when you said, uh, anybody got any suggestions? Alex went, like that and so alex quickly yeah i just wanted to, to you had mentioned lit earlier so i was curious did you use lit in this because that's i mean that's uses web components which anything can run web components we could use or, web components yeah. and uh we with relatively ease that's already possible to be honest but i think i think i like we should have a special recreator before we define the class of the methods. And so some magic happens and then you just put in the DOM like your new component dot new and, and, and all the things you expect to happen happens. At the end of the day though, web components still need that chunk of text with the HTML button stuff inside. So this is just the smallest brick you can have to render the stuff and ship your web component anywhere you like. Cool. Uh, Jeff, you had a question? And then Lukash? Yeah, I just had a really maybe niche question about your about your code there. You were calling what looked like a, just a, an update function inside of your component there. Is that? Oh, Can we just look at that? Screen, so maybe yeah. Maybe it's All right, so uh, here is just the bootstrap. So the update, it, it, it could be like- uh, uh, We don't see it, Andrea. Up. Can't see it. Right. You see now? Yeah, perfect. There we go. Okay, so because somebody mentioned React, this could be app instead of update, right? Um, the update is just a bootstrap. So this is the entry function. It doesn't have to be called update. It can be just show. And uh, this this just the bootstrap, the first render. And then because listeners can change, can have side effects, like in this case, the count variable gets updated. And then update, which is going to be show now, um, needs to be reinvoked. So this is not a reactive out of the box because there are no symbols, use state, or all the reactivity primitives that are often used in the, I don't know, SolidJS, React, Vue. So this is, or uh, even Svelte. So this is not react reactive out of the box, but we could have a, a reactive value that whenever it change, it 
inbox automatically it's it's uh, rendering pipe or its context so this is all doable this is just a basic thing that some method like here in h3 click when i click i just want to print the event type i don't want to re-render update because nothing changed on the dom so this could be as well an api that eventually gets resolved with json and parse and then at the end we update something or i just want to increment the the counter and uh and update literally at the point of the, the the rest of the rest of the view in this case update is just change whatever template literal was used before update it with the only only what changes in there with the new value in this case the new value is going to be count which is going to be count plus one hopefully i've answered yeah yeah that makes that makes a lot of sense thank you okay martin has his hand up for a quick a side question before we hand over to lucas so Martin, do you want to just while the while the code's on the screen? Yeah, sorry. Um, so you said, uh, Andre, that it just update. Is is your render function doing something to like? So when count changes, is only the the button being updated, or is it, or is this really calling? Is actually putting that whole chunk, the H three and the button, that it, into the into the DOM again? So. The library itself is smart enough to understand that the only thing that can change in this template are interpolations, right? So these values yeah. here. So actually this never changed, so nothing happens. If this changed though, if this was some lambda that could become a different listener out of the blue, then the new listener will be added and the previous listener will be removed. Uh, if the value is different, so let's, let's do this. Um, value is uh, uh, work count, for instance. So in this case, when you see the, the exploded here um, body, so when I expanded, sorry, not exploded. So right it's now- It's the same thing. <laughs> 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 oh, the value doesn't doesn't change. Damn it! Oh, yes, of course. So we have the H three and the button, and um, the de the developer tools tells you which node changed it. And if it was the whole body or the whole thing, it will collapse again all the nodes. Right. So you can see, you can nice. see now that the yeah. only thing that is changing live, actually, in terms of actual DOM manipulation is just this chunk, which is a, um, this is a node apart. So it's a text node apart and this chunk as well. So this is how all reactive things usually work. So they just update atomically the only thing that they can possibly yes. update. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah. Nice. That's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, but it's not super reactive. So we could have something that like count could be a better primitive for reactivity like count set count get and then you will have a symbol like approach so that you just uh, have uh, count get here although this is uh, this is weird because it doesn't work with interpolations anymore but we could have a smarter approach for count or count could have an automatic to string uh, that reproduce the value and then we can uh, we can say out, outside count dot set and it updates automatically the render. But these these are all things like I say doable is just not for this quick demo that I put together in five minutes. Oh, uh, uh, Martin, go on very very Sorry. quickly. Very very quickly, two things. Awesome, it's something that I've been thinking about for since PyScript. How can I get hold of the code? How can you get sorry? How can I get hold of that code and so I can play with it? Um, I will send you a link later on. So awesome. it's, uh, it's, really... it's in a test folder in, in currently in PolyScript, but I want to port it to PyScript so I can use all the latest features, uh, including modules. And I want also to test the template ability, the, the template module in uh, in uh, MicroPython, because if this works in MicroPython, it, it unlocks a lot of possibilities because it becomes super quick, super fast, uh, also on the main thread. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, that's but, that's really cool. I know. Like, if we can take this, add the add the reactivity part to it, and then, but that's that's really cool. Really so cool. You you saw it here first, folks. React.py. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> with that segue, <laughs> segue to Lukas, your question. Yeah. Yeah. So so. Uh... My question was kind of answered already, but I still kind of while trying to understand what this is actually doing, right? Because it took me a while to, to figure out that, that, yeah, this is in fact reactive. And if, you know, one variable changes, then we're going to have the, like the reload is going to happen automatically. So you're going to see this, you know, kind of uh, update uh, without uh, having to run any, any more code. Uh, but we were talking about string interpolation and about like how this is different from strings and whatever. So first of all, like, yeah, like F strings are eager. So there is no way to uh, essentially make them into a template. Uh, there is an open tab to maybe make this, you know, kind of uh, user configurable. So you could have maybe not an F string, but an G string or like a H string or whatever else. And, you know, actually make this behave differently. So for F strings, yeah, like the ship has sailed, like this is eager, uh, we cannot use this. Um, now what you're using though is string template, right? I, I guess if I, if I heard correctly, and it in fact like looks like strict, the string template, um, which is uh, nice, but like it also allows you to just use a bare dollar and identifier, which might be a little over eager with real HTML that you might want to use uh, if you use like, you know, kind of any dollar amounts or whatnot, like it might try to uh, actually kind of bind too many uh, variables um, compared to what the user intends. Uh, so I was thinking, you know, kind of, oh, what about other templating engines that we already have for Python and whatever. Like, I'm not actually sure how you could compose those with what you're doing here, because like you can now use the fact that this essential uh, template is not, you know, filled by you kind of eagerly, but you're using it as like, oh, those are the variables I need to look at and to be reactive to. Uh, so I'm not sure how you would use Jinja for this, for example. But that got me thinking, and I have this question now. That's my actual question, which is only tangentially related to the project. But Armin Ronacker wrote Jinja 2 back in the day, right? And, you know, kind of that was inspired by the Django templating uh, language. So it has not one brace, but double braces for variables. The reason why is that the actual first thing added was brace percent for arbitrary Python code that you can have there. So I guess this is a little too much, like you don't want to have arbitrary code since it would be hard to figure out when you would evaluate. But now Armin is kind of in, in Rust land. He's more, you know, kind of doing things on that side of the, of the pond. Uh, but PyScript is kind of in the middle because it runs in a browser where Rust can actually be also compiled to WebAssembly and whatnot. So I'm, I was, my, my question really is now this. Uh, so there's mini Jinja, a Rust templating language that is sort of like a mini version of Jinja 2 for Python. And there's even Python bindings for mini Jinja, which is faster and smaller and you know, whatever. Uh, so my question is like, is it possible to use something that is written in Rust as a um, dependency on a PyScript project? Like if it's uh, kind of in, in this case done, I think with, uh, what, what is it? It's uh, the bindings are made with mature and empire three. So like, you know, kind of will that work? Will that not work? What, what do people would have to do for something like this to work? Uh, many topics, many questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, my advice is you, you could go join the web assembly working group. And <laughs> no, well, no, um, I, think... I want, okay, no, sorry. But... Uh, no, no, that's fine. I think it's the same thing for, you know, new version of Pydantic and other libraries using our, our uh, sorry, Rust um, bindings and stuff too. Yeah. Like you, you need to compile that for, um, for WebAssembly and, and just, you know, the same thing you do as usual with uh, Pyodide to include in the bundle. Um, not sure about MicroPython though, um, to be honest, I have right. zero idea. Um, but the other, I think, uh, what else we, I, I kind of remember someone doing a library that had uh, Rust uh, bindings, but I, I, I 
forget now what it okay, was. Okay, but Pydatic 2 works with PySquip with Pyodide. Yes. Okay, so I, I look into that then and, and you know, kind of figure out if Mini Jinja works today or if not, if it can be made to work. Yeah, I, I was, yeah, I was looking into that with Sebastian from Fast API because he wanted to use in the docs and there, there uh, anyway, I, I think Pydantic had an example with Py, Pydantic 2, and, but the official Pyodide was 1.2 whatever. So there was like, but someone did compile Pydantic 2 for, for Pyodide. Right. So if I can share my screen, uh, sure. I can probably explain some extra point because I didn't show beside the, the index page, uh, the main pie, um, sorry, the index pie. Um, I didn't show what's, what's going on and how does it work. So first of all, I didn't invent anything in here. This is just exactly how the template yeah. works. So you have a template, you get identifiers, the template does this for me. So if I change this to uh, brackets, brackets, so first of all, the, I don't know, the highlight is still there. I don't know if this works. If this works, then it's the template being being called the template string being smart enough. I try no, removing that, that just would, the dollar. That, that I don't think it's going to work, right? No. Yeah, so this won't work. So this is like <coughs> was, uh, the, the, the module gave me something that that is very similar and works very closely to how JavaScript works. Mm -hmm. So we are getting identifier, mapping identifier by keys. So and then I pass just the the like key value pair. In this case is is literally the module, um, the module's name. So this is the tag is actually the local. Um, Sorry, where is it? So when I do this, the name is passed, and then the module is passed along uh, with its dict, and uh, and uh, this is resolved out of this, this variable, and that's it. So if this doesn't exist, or if I put something else, um, I, I expect this to throw because it, or to be undefined at least because it, it or non or uh, yeah or to throw yeah to throw it cannot it is not sub subscriptable or something like that um so but I, I'm really not doing much in here it's just I'm transforming the template the way Python understand template in the way that JavaScript natively understand templates the difference in JavaScript would be just um yeah html so in javascript it would be like this yeah what you see here can be a, a template literal tag the template the tag is string the tag is sorry function is html and then here you will oh, you will put this stuff and this is native javascript and how template literal works in javascript so this can return anything you want it, it has nothing to do with the string is actually um, it extract the string in a template variable, which is all the chunks that you see as strings. Yeah. And uh, among these, all the interpolation as value, actually. So there's no code evaluation at all in here. It's just passing the actual value without, uh, I mean, it's just native JavaScript. So there's no code evaluation. I use Jinja uh, too, as well, in the, my previous company, uh, because they were using that for uh, server-side rendering. But the main difference between all the Django, Jinja, and all these kind of template engines, besides the syntax, which I agree, this might not be the best one or the easier, the easier to reason about if you don't know what's possible on, on JS side, because otherwise, for me, it looks really, really natural for, for, for all the library template literal string-based libraries. They are all like this. So for me, it's kind of natural, but I understand that for people with more experience in Python and this kind of Jinja 2, Django, or any other that you mentioned, uh, yeah. remember here we are passing a, a listener. And so I don't know how Jinja 2 would understand this listener if not by converting into a string and then making that string on the DOM. But you don't right. you don't have this on the DOM. So this is just a, 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 a real listener added to the node. It's nothing that you can see 
uh, on the dom does not yeah uh, the, my, my comment about familiarity is more like if you just show the code the fact that the um, syntax highlighting works for this is kind of incidental like the the, the only reason why the uh, braces are blue is because VS Code thinks that this is uh, just a regular Python string, and you know, in a regular Python string, you can have variables in braces, and it doesn't understand the dollar. It only understands the, 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 the yeah, exactly that, right? So yeah, but yeah, I know, I know, but if I remove the dollar, the template. Okay. Sure, 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 sure. All I'm, all I'm saying is that like now the, the, the syntax highlighting is misleading, right? Because it, it kind of says like something that like, oh, I'm, I'm highlighting the, the thing for you, but it, it is not. Like if you remove the braces around value, but keep the dollar, this will still work with, uh, uh, yeah, this will still work with string template, right? Like it doesn't actually require those, that, that will still work. Uh, oh, you, that's yeah, it? You have, uh, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you don't have to, read, yeah, to do all of them, but you know, kind of, I, oh. I was just making a point like that. Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't mind this point. It's, uh, like I said, in, in JavaScript, for me, it was natural yeah. to write it that way. So, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. Th this is fine that this is following more like the JS way of things. I'm just saying like the string template is kind of maybe even predating the HTML kind of literal in JavaScript. Yeah. I don't even know. But like it's, uh, it's not exactly the same. It's not like one to one. There's going to be differences. And here, like, see, like the variables right now are no longer uh, highlighted. And the reason why is that VS Code doesn't understand that this is some special uh you know templating language you know so this is why i was thinking about some some something like jinja which is more kind of popular in the python community so that tooling around it like you know vs code like it could be made to understand that oh this is a this is actually python with html templates by you know jinja templates so it would highlight stuff correctly but that this is a s small kind of you know just idea like you spend way more time working on this than i just you know, thinking about like interpolation here, like, you know, kind of how, how to denote the variables. I, I gotta be honest, I can't read easily variables that I'm passing or that I need anymore. So for me, this was actually a plus, but I understand yeah, yeah, so, that it's so, because, so this, this, because yeah. is helping me. Or I agree with you about me. this, only like that you don't really require uh, the, the braces. That means braces, sometimes yeah. somebody will write just content not meaning to actually create a variable, but they will create a variable because it's a string template. This is what I mean. And this is yeah, something yeah, that yeah, like yeah. JavaScript would ignore because there would not be, not be braces, but Python will still read dollar or whatever name. Um, yeah, but yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So if I want to have uh, it's, a, it's a gotcha then, I guess. Like uh, a dollar A, yeah, yeah, this, this is going to break. That's what you're saying, right? Yeah. 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 And, uh, and if I don't want uh, that to break, what should I do? Dollar dollar. This one? Dollar dollar. Oh yeah, yeah. I read that actually. <laughs> hey. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a valid concern. Um I haven't really spent <laughs> a minute I mean, thinking about this. For so me, the it was only just, reason uh, like I I kind of nitpicking on something that is clearly a tech demo, right? Like at best uh, at this point, is that once you select the syntax for oh this is how you uh, you know um, put variables in a template you're stuck with the syntax forever so you know kind of it's yeah. it's, it's kind of like a important decision because you know you can only make it once uh which again like if this is similar to javascript i i'm not against it's fine uh only i'm just saying like there are kind of a little small gotchas to using string string template for this yeah yeah, I agree. This this is just a quick demo for fun. But fun also, fun. Oh, oh, maybe more importantly, string template is very small. Like you can mm -hmm. literally just go ahead, like to see Python and see in the source code how that works. So you could have a string template just copied into whatever you're doing, and for example, remove the ability to just do the dollar name without the braces, and and then by that just remove this gotcha. So you know, kind of. You don't really expose the fact that this is a string template. You just used it for a tech, de tech demo. Like you could just kind of bundle it and change it so that it is more like JavaScript. Okay. Yeah, but that that means that I need to rebuild my own thing and publish somewhere, so it has to be. No, 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 no. Like, I, I, literally, like there, there, there's there's a there, there's a file in the standard library called string py, right? Like you know, you can open the, the, the file and see that there's a class called template. 
uh, and you know you could just bundle this somehow like you know with uh, with your U UHTML library uh, and you know kind of uh, just use that. Okay. Uh... <laughs> so you're sort of vendoring that class is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. Because, you know, kind of now, now kind of just using the built in one, like, obviously, it's cool, because we're using the standard library, you know, code reviews and everything. But like, it is it is very old and has a bunch of small differences from the JavaScript things that, you know, people might expect when they see, oh, this looks like JavaScript, but it's not exactly that. So you could just take the code that is already there, and just modify it a bit. So that is more like JavaScript and less like what the string template is by default. Uh, there is a layer of also, it would be good to have it work the same way for PyDite and MicroPython. I was just about to say, I don't, I don't think MicroPython has capital T template class in string. That's, uh, that's world one. Oh, really? It doesn't? That's interesting. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, Funnily enough, templating is not really used that often in. Uh... <laughs> sure. it, <it's laughs> but, but, but Damien's fast finding now that lots of people are using MicroPython in the browser that there's a whole bunch <laughs> of stuff now that people yeah. really do want. So uh, it's going to be a big adventure for him this year as well. Um... Oh, Jeff, I, you're talking, but I can't hear you. Uh, I wanted to actually advocate for Jeff because he also has a, a, a demo. Uh, so. Oh, sure. uh, for the sake of time, I just want to remind we only have another 17 minutes. Um, and close with saying we should really look into supporting this type of uh, yeah. flow as well. So this is amazing. Uh, thank you, Andrea. OK, Jeff? Sure. Uh, I'll just I'll tag on to the, the last discussion that I think Andrea mentioned. Um, now that we have MIP in MicroPython, um, I, I did a version of template for MicroPython that you can just install straight from GitHub. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be in a package library. You can just point pi, you know, mpy config at my GitHub repo and get template into your mpy if you if you want it. Um, but that's orthogonal to my demo, although it's very cool. My demo is much less flashy than uh, than Andrea's. Um, and I, I'll just share my screen here if I can. That will be this one. Let's see if this works. Uh, can you all see that? Yep. Very good. So it's a, a little demo, and I, I teased this in one of the previous meetings. So uh, Advent of Code wrapped up uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, for those who haven't seen it, it's the annual uh, Coding Challenge a Day Challenge for December um, with increasing difficulty. It's just adventofcode.com. If you haven't done it, it's really fun. It's this you know, excuse to like flex your, your programming skills a little bit. So like in previous years, I did mine uh, entirely in PyScript. Um, and what I like about it is that then not only can I sort of write a blog post about uh, Advent of code and solving the problems, but you can, you know, display the code that you are running immediately on the page, right? So we can say, so here's how I solve day one, and here's the actual file. And then if you want to run it, um, you can just run it right in the browser. So this is live in my blog. Okay, Jeff .glass. Um, and when you load PyScript, it, it, you know, injects PyScript into the page, and you can grab your output. Let's see, this is day one, part one. I can go to my day one, part one problem, which asks some very simple question about find the first and last digit in each line, smash them together into a number, add all those numbers up, what's it going to be? But of course, your your actual input is some, you know, giant text document of lots and lots of input. So I just make it easy if you copy and paste that into the site and hit run, you should get an answer pretty much straight away. So it's a way for people to both see my code, run the code, and then check out, you know, sort of validate their own answers, assuming my code is right, which is, you know, not necessarily a given. Um, and then sort of the fun expansion to this that I've been working on, especially with the new terminal attributes that um, Andrea has been putting in, is since we're running in the browser, we might as well have some visualizations to go along with it. Um, not that this is a flawless example, but, um, Day 10 part two this year asked a kind of complicated question about if I have the visual representation of a, of a loop of pipe and I'll just flash to what my input was. Uh, somehow this string of dashes and slashes and Fs and Js represents somewhere buried in here, some one contiguous loop of symbols, which you have to programmatically find and then count up the number of uh, pipe segments in. And you can't see it here, obviously, it's, it's sort of a mess. Um, but since we're running in the browser, if I paste my input here and then run visualization, and you'll see where the formatting is still a little hinky, but since we have an X term, I can have it print out colored output to where it identifies sort of the pipe segments for me and draws them visually. Obviously, it's running off the end of the screen, and I have to do some adjustment to figure out how to make the you know, number of columns bigger and so on. 
Um, so this is just like, you know, a, a little bit of a, an exploration of how to start using the visualizer. Um, but uh, I figured why not have some visualization as long as we're running sort of in the browser. The other cool thing that I, I got to play with uh, was, um, you know, it, it's obviously it's a lot faster if you can experiment with your solutions in the terminal and not entirely in PyScript. So every one of my solutions has some boilerplate built into it that lets them all run in you know, desktop C Python or in PyScript. And there's a, a little bit of jiggery poker. Like if it's not running in PyScript, capture the display function and reroute it to print essentially. So things like that. So there's some there's some API thoughts that I have coming out of this. Like, can we align some of this boilerplate to make it easier for PyScript code to run in desktop Python and vice versa? Um, so that was kind of an interesting experiment there. Um, but yeah, that's that's the gist of it. It's just it's all the solutions. It's 37 to 50 solutions to add of code because there's a, a few left on my hit list after Christmas um, that all just run in the browser. That's very cool. That's very, very cool. Well, Any questions yeah. or comments? I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, for me like the first few uh, challenges were easy peasy, but then it became more demanding and demanding in terms of time. <laughs> and I was like, you know what, <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> uh, yeah, super cool, super cool. And yeah, the terminal, um, I hope the, so right now it's published on NPM. Um, I don't know if Nicolas managed to release or if- No, not today. Tomorrow. I've been stuck in meetings, sorry. Yeah, it's fine. And uh, if you want to test, Jeff, uh, with the latest and the terminal, I reached the terminal. I don't know if the term X term exposes a way to auto stretch, automatically do all the things. I expect yes, um, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure. So it's just there. You you reach the script with the terminal attribute and you do dot terminal and that's the X term and you're free to do whatever you want from that moment on. If there's more to expose, please let me know because it's, it's uh, pretty easy to expose more expose more from external and i don't know if the layout is handled by that reference or by some of the other reference so yeah um please let me know yeah, if you have a chance to play with it. for sure i'll play around with the there, i know there's an auto fit sort of add-on to it um that i'll see if i can inject after after the terminal exists or if you have to do it at, at startup time but I'll, I'll play around and see what we learn um yeah that'd be super helpful cool. yeah by the way i'm using the npm unreleased uh, version for the clear thing for the tic-tac-toe demo, yeah. Thanks. Yeah, it, it works great, yeah. Awesome. Okay, so um, tomorrow I'll do a release. I'll cut a release. Uh, um, so we'll have 2024 1.1 coming out tomorrow. Uh, in fact, I might even do it in a minute because it takes all of about three seconds to, to do. So uh, there we go. Um, so and I'll post that when it's done um, over on uh, on Discord, which is actually where we are now. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, any more for any more? Any more questions for Jeff? No, just uh, repeat what everyone said. This is really cool. Yeah. Um, and I, yeah, I, I, again, I love how you you have a really good eye for displaying things and making them easy to digest for people. Like this is a great display of like, I have the challenge here. I have my code. I have, you know, the, 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 the app running interactively in the same page, etc. And yeah, I, I think this is a type of use case that you do re you execute really well. And I think we should advertise more because it could be so, so useful for everyone. For sure. Yeah. I, I love the, on the implementation side, the fact that writing in this way guarantees that the code that the user is running is exactly what they're looking at on the screen, right? I don't have to do, and I can say I'm I'm writing my Python over here, and here's what it does, and there's no there's no way to get out of sync because they're literally displaying and running the same file. Is it just eliminates it's a whole class of I wrote about one thing and I ran a different thing errors, and that's I think from a Explanation standpoint is really cool to play with, so super fun. Yeah, yeah. And if you think about technical documentation, uh, you know the percentage of documentation and examples with outdated code and other things that are broken and you don't realize is 
you know, clo I, I would say it's close to upper 90 percent, up 90 percent. Uh, with this, it's so much clearer that something is broken, uh, and it's harder to break because you ship everything all together. So yeah. it's, it's yeah, really cool. Cool. Um, any more? Otherwise, I'll uh, I'll find out in about a minute whether this video recording has worked. <laughs> Okay, uh, if there's nothing else, I'll see you folks in a fortnight for more PyScript fun. Oh, uh, were you waving, Lukash, or was that you putting your hand up going one more thing? No, 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 I was just essentially waving. Okay, all right, okay. I should, Hard I to should tell. give you some gift or whatever. I yeah, just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, always lovely to see you folks. I'm really excited about what we can get going. Uh, oh, perfect. Look at all these gifts. Uh and a duck. Oh, my gosh. Um, ah. Ah, stop it. Kids. Kids. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Um, octopuses, too. Um, okay. So, yeah. Let's onwards and upwards. Um, and without further ado, uh, I'll say uh, that's, that's the end of the event. So I'm going to click the big red end event button. Hey. Oh. You were waiting all meeting for that, weren't you, Luca? <laughs> <laughs> you could see his face. He was actually ah, come on. The click. Uh. Okay. Ciao, ciao, folks. See you later. Ciao. Bye.